So I go and take a nap um, yesterday because by the time you listen to this, watch it, it'll be Sunday. And I will probably uh, more than likely be getting ready to go and celebrate my um, nephew's, my oldest nephew's uh, birthday uh, out in Folsom or in the Sacramento area. Uh, But anyway, you know, when I got up from my nap, um, of course, I ended up missing money in the bank because, you know, I was like I said, I was sleeping, I was tired. But um, as I was looking through Twitter, one of the things that popped up was, you know, John Cena. And the news item focused around John Cena was him appearing at Money in the Bank and announcing that he is retiring from WWE, you know, starting next year. And that the way this is going to work, apparently, as he put it in the press conference, is he's going to be wrestling, at least try to do, or at least, no, I shouldn't say doing, you know, and everything, but at least he's going to try to do, that's what I was trying to say, at least he's going to try to do a full-time, or at least semi-full-time schedule, you know, starting in January of next year with the first Raw on Netflix, you know, and then, of course, going into the Royal Rumble in February, then Elimination Chamber, then WrestleMania, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, you name it. He's going to basically, with this, you know, last tour, last, you know, the last time it's now farewell tour, you know, he's going to try to hit every marquee PLE slash PPV uh, event the WWE has to offer, as well as try to, you know, hit and compete at every, you know, Raw and SmackDown uh, that year, as well as maybe do a live event here and there. Now, apparently, the way this is going to work, according to various reports, is it's going to be for about 30 to 40 dates or 30 to 40 matches. I'm not really sure. So obviously it's not going to be like every week. It's just going to be more like, it's going to be kind of like a Roman Reigns schedule, but more along the lines of, you know, Roman Reigns, when he became, or was starting to become the tribal chief, he was still on a semi-regular basis. And he appeared more often than he would later on. So I think that's what we're getting here with John in this farewell tour. He's going to basically be showing up as much as he can, probably more so than he ever has in 2025. Now, with that said, everybody upon hearing this, you know, are wondering, okay, how is this going to, how is this going to, you know, occur? How is this all going to take place? Like, you know, what's going to be, the end goal and everything. And I think John said it best in his promo in the ring, and that is, it's about opportunity. So I think what we're going to get is John Cena getting in the ring with not just some familiar faces that he's been in the ring with before, but he's going to get in the ring with some of the future, you know, faces of this company. Like I could see him getting into the ring with a Braun Breaker. People would love to see that. And that would be obviously, you know, a match to put Braun Breaker over as the next, you know, big name in WWE, the next generational talent. Um, People have been clamoring for him and Randy to have a one-on-one match, you know, at WrestleMania, and that might be what happens. You know, that might be what occurs. Maybe John comes out, you know, because we've seen it before. We have seen this before where somebody will come out and say, hey, I want to face you at WrestleMania. This is my last WrestleMania. I can't think of anybody better. And that might be what we get. We might possibly at WrestleMania 41 in Las Vegas, you know, just, you know, for old time's sake, you know, we'll get Randy Orton and John Cena, you know, finally one-on-one. That's possibly what will occur, if not more than likely. And I know OTR Central, the Slack Daddy, Jeff, will be more than happy um, to see that occur. Uh, the other question, of course, is with this being his last run, or at least semi-full-time run, is will he break the record? Will he finally get that 17th championship and go down as the greatest world champion of all time? And that's a, you know that's a terrific question to ask because sometimes when you know wrestlers go on their last run, like we saw with Sting, you know, they don't want to be, you know, crowned, the, you know, they don't want to be crowned the man, you know, one last time. They want to, 
you know, so, you know, you know, they want us to pass. And I wouldn't say surpass that. They want to pass on from. They, they want to, you know, pass forward from that. Or, you know, basically push that aside and say, no, that I've done my time. You know, let's give it to somebody else. But, you know, we'll see. You know, and I think the one that makes that call is not just, you know, Nick Khan, Rock, Triple H, but it's mostly going to come down to John Cena. Does John Cena want to have that one last run on top? You know. We'll have to see. We'll have to see what happens. Um, but it, but it's going to be interesting throughout 2025 on how this all occurs. Now, you might ask as well as, you know, you might ask as well, I should say, why wait till 2025? Why not start it now? Well, because of the fact that he has a, you know, he's a, he has a lot going on. He's got a lot of projects happening. You know, he just had the trailer come out for his movie Jackpot with Aquafina. Uh, which looks really good in my opinion. So, you know, he's basically looking at the fact that, hey, you know, um, I'm got, I got, you know, too much on my plate right now. And um, probably, and he's probably looking at 2025, like, hey, this might be the best opportunity. So he's working with his agents. He's working with, he's working with his agents. He's getting his agents to possibly uh, talk to a lot of the studios and everything out there and tell them, hey, look, you know, uh, John wants. John knows. You know he's got to. Um, he's got to commit fully. You know down the line to this whole Hollywood thing and all that. So they're probably telling him, "Hey, he wants to have. He's been wanting to get this one last run. He's been trying to work on the opportunity, and now here it is." So I think the agents have been working overtime. John, along with them, I should say, his agents have been working overtime to try to get this worked out to where. Yeah, he's going to have some other projects lined up, you know, in 2025 outside of WWE. But basically, he's going to be allowed, you know, be allowed and allotted a lot more opportunity to go out and appear on Raw, compete on Raw, appear on SmackDown, compete at SmackDown or on SmackDown, you know, uh, compete, you know, at a live event, maybe an SM, maybe a, maybe a MSG event, Madison Square Garden garden excuse me you know and so on you know you know i i think that's what's i think that's why he was able to come out and, and make the announcement he did last night that you know 2025 is going to be you know the last run because it's going to he he's basically working out if not has worked out the opportunity to be allotted the uh, a lot of the time he needs to make this last farewell tour you know a memorable one and how they go about it, we'll have to see. Because again, there's a lot of you know, there's a lot of opponents he can go up against. I mean, think about it this way: I mentioned Braun Breaker earlier. Fans are gonna definitely see that because that's opportunity. What about him and Jacob Part Two? Think about that. John Cena, within his last year, can make stars out of not just you know, not just Braun Breaker, but he can make stars out of you know, Jacob Part Two. Like I was saying, he, he can't. He, like I said, he, you know, in his last year, he could not just make stars out of Braun Breaker, but he could also make one out of Jack, Jacob Part Two, because that would be the future that the company looks at. Mostly Braun, more than Jacob, unfortunately. But you get the idea. You know, that's the future they can look at, and by having someone like John Cena put them over. Uh, and say, hey, this is the future and everything, then I, I think that'd be a great move. I think that'd be fun, you know, to see. I think it'd be fun to see. And then, of course, you know, people are going to want him and Cody to face each other. Now, you might say, you know, you might ask yourself, well, wait a minute, haven't they ever faced, have they ever faced before? And then, yes. Yes, they have faced before when Cody was, you know, dashing Cody Rhodes, when he was legacy Cody Rhodes and everything. Uh, when he was undashing and all that, when he was stardust, you know, they did face each other. There's no doubt in one-on-one -on -one matches. But, you know, when people, you know, say that he needs to face Cody because that's a dream match now that needs to be a reality, what they're talking about is he needs to face the American nightmare, Cody Rhodes, and not, you know, and not, you know, just uh, Cody Rhodes of another gimmick or personality and all that. They, you know, he needs to face the real Cody, the American Nightmare Cody, the one that's, you know, reinvented himself, made himself into who he is 
now basically the new face of professional wrestling, the new face of WWE and such. And, you know, and that's what they're talking about by saying, by, you know, including, you know, inserting Cody's name as a potential opponent for him to face, maybe in his retirement match. We're not really sure. But we'll have to, we'll have to see what they got planned because, you know, they apparently have, you know, big plans. Like I said, it's about 30, 40 dates or sub matches. I don't know what it is that he's going to be doing uh, from January to December, but it's going to be interesting. And you know, he's also going to want to do a, a lot of firsts as well. You know, he's going to, that's one, he's not just going to want to do some, you know, first time matchups and everything with certain opponents, but he's also going to want to do potentially uh, some first, you know, first time um, inclusions, if you will, into certain matches. You know, like, have we ever seen John Cena in War Games? No, we've not. This could, in 2025, could be the year. John Cena, part of a team at War Games or, you know, leading the team at war games would be great. You know, it, it, you know, it's just one of the scenarios to a, a lot, you know, a lot of things are going to happen. A lot of things will occur. And I think fans are going to be, you know, thrilled one way or another. Now, some people are saying he needs to turn heel. I hear Alex Hicks of Jeff Alex's world, you know, on you here on YouTube saying he needs to be a heel. And look, everybody has a right to their opinion on that. You know, they do. They have a right to their opinion, you know, that John, and you know, needs to go against the fans. He needs to go Hollywood. He needs to, you know, be the John, be the John Cena that when he turns heel like Roman did, you're going to get a John Cena that, you know, you're going to love, you know, you're going to love to hate and you're going to hate to love and, and all that. Look, I agree, you know, maybe a heel turn or a tweener turn might be what, you know, you know, might be what's needed to help, you know, you know, basically help facilitate, really help, you know, um, basically put this farewell tour on the epicelon, you know, tier, epicelon tier uh, for 2025 when it comes to WWE. But, you know, here's the truth. John doesn't need to turn heel. He doesn't need to turn, a, you know, become a tweener. He just be, you know, he could just be himself. He's, he's gotten to a point now. He's gotten to a point now to where, when fans see him, they're happy to see him. You know, they they're glad to see him. And knowing that 2025 is it for him, that year is it. They're not going to get sick and tired of him like they've done in previous years. They're going to embrace him even more, to the point that in the in their minds, you know, they're going to hope and pray they can convince him not to hang it up just yet, to potentially wait, you know, to hang it up. But again, it's going to be, it's going to be an interesting situation uh, going, you know, going into next year. And I also want you to think about this too. I want you to think about this too. Next year will mark 20 years since John Cena became the face of WWE. You know, since he was given the rocket, since he had the rocket, you know, pack strapped to him and just taken off to the atmosphere to so, so unbelievable heights and breaking so many ceilings and, you know, and all that, you know, that people eventually, of course, got sick and tired of him. But it's going to mark 20 years since he and people like Batista and all that became household names, became, you know, uh, the SmackDown 6 became part of that Russell's aggression and all that. So I've got a feeling that already you're looking at, you know, from a Hall of Fame standpoint, from a Hall of Fame standpoint, you're looking at, you know, John Cena and Batista being your two inductees for next year, along with The Rock. Yeah. I've got a feeling that The Rock, John Cena, and Batista... And that's a hell of a lineup right there, a hell of a trio, will be your Hall of Fame inductees for 2025 because it will mark, again, 20 years since they became household names, since they became the faces of WWE. Now, you might say, well, what about Randy Orton? Randy, I think, too, could be included in that, and that would be a heck of a foursome right there. But I think if Randy is still able to go, even in 2025, if he can keep himself healthy, I think he's more of a lock for 2026. 
But if I was to look at the first two inductees into the 2025 Hall of Fame class, possibly along with the Rocks, it's all going to be in Las Vegas next year, then I'm definitely going to say John Cena and Batista because it marks 20 years since they ascended to the very top. And that would de- and and here's the thing: when people say that, you know, the plans are, you know, there are when people say that John has mentioned and reports are mentioning that there are big plans for John. I'm not going to discount the fact that one part of those big plans is to induct him into the Hall of Fame next year, because I think that's exactly what part of the big plans are: get him into the Hall of Fame, you know, during his last year, during his last run, you know, before he hangs it up. And do it alongside people like Batista and The Rock, who he's been in the ring with, had great rivalries with, and maybe even Randy Orton um, as well, and maybe even CM Punk. You know, we'll, we'll have to see. But again, to me, the most likely to, along possibly alongside possibly The Rock, to get inducted next year into WWE class as Hall of Fame class of 2025 is going to be him. It's going to be you know Cena, Batista. And like I said, The Rock. The Rock, you know, is going to be inducted along with them. You know, that's what's going to happen. Now, I do apologize if I kind of t- stumble on my words. It's a little late and everything. Of course, I'm trying to do this while my mom is, you know, watching her show and kind of falling asleep on the couch right now. Uh, but anyway, but anyway, um, to me, I think that's what's going to happen next year as well. Along with, like I said, some other first. You know, I can see him competing in a, a war games match i can see him competing you know maybe if they want to try it out in a fight pit match if they can find a a good story for him to be involved in that would culminate in that you know so there's a lot of things that can happen and of course you know there's the opportunity of him becoming a champion not just you know a 17 time world champion which i think they do want to you know uh, i think they do want to um ha- have happen as well so he'll go down as one of the greatest if not the greatest of all time but I think also they want to give him a run with a championship he has yet to have. You know, everybody talks about Sheamus, you know, never being, you know, kind of a champion. It's the one title he's yet to win. Well, I think next year you're looking at, you know, not just Sheamus winning it, but I think you're seeing John Cena win it uh, as well. So Cena's going to, so I look at it this way. Cena is going to have a lot of things happen next year that are going to be, you know, a lot of first, memorable first. You know, he's going to uh, be in his first war games. You know, that's going to happen. He's going to become a 17-time world, ch- 17 time world champion. That's got to happen. It's obvious. He's probably going to win, you know, the Intercontinental Championship. There's no doubt about that. And more, and, and more than likely, he's going to get inducted into the Hall of Fame next year. You know, and again, think about the names that can join along with him. Like I said, Batista would be an obvious name. Rock, another one. Bray Wyatt. You know, that class next year in 2025 is going to be stacked. That That's all I'm going to say there. And then also think about this, too. They have the king. Of the, if they bring back the king and queen of the ring, or mostly the king of the ring, I could see John Cena possibly winning that just to say he's done it all. But... We'll have to see. We'll have to see what they do. Um, and, you know, as part of these big plans over the next year from January to December of 2025. Uh, but we do know he's going to be part of the first Raw on Netflix. You know, obviously they would need an opponent. A lot of people are clamoring for him and Punk to have another match together and just, you know, let them go out there and do their thing. And I think that'd be great. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what they do. But, again, there's a lot of opportunities out there. You know, a lot of first-time matches. Him against Braun Breaker. Him against Jacob Fatu. Him against Gunther. You know, there's a lot of first. There's a lot of first out there. I mean, one obvious match they have to do because the storytelling would be perfect is him and Logan Paul. And let me explain why. See, Logan Paul is acting like he's better than everybody else because he's a influencer. He's a Hollywood celebrity. But yet here you have John Cena that began in wrestling, became a Hollywood celebrity, became an influencer himself. But, you know, here's somebody that could pretty much tell him, hey, if you want to be accepted, if you don't want to be hated and everything, if you want people to be like, hey, this guy's cool and everything you know we get that he's a fan and he's just a fan living out his dream and he might seem obnoxious and everything at times you know 
that he has to be willing to put in the real work. He has to be willing to at least, you know, be on the road, you know, kind of like make some sacrifices, uh, you know, make some sacrifices to gain the respect that he's, you know, that he's lacking right now. And to me, that's a, that's a story, to me, that's a good story that could be told between the two. To where maybe from a storyline perspective, John can help Logan, you know, open up his eyes and realize, okay, maybe, maybe I've been a jerk and maybe I just need to be more committed to this uh, than, you know, the what, you know, than what I am right now. You know, or maybe, or maybe it's a story to where John opens Logan's eyes, not saying that would, that would happen, but he makes Logan realize, hey, maybe this wrestling thing isn't for me, but I could still be part of WWE by being part of its, you know, creative process or being part of its YouTube influencer team and stuff like that. So, you know, so that, you know, those are things, you know, storyline wise that, you know, you could build around between a matchup between Cena between John Cena and Logan Paul. But yeah, that's a matchup that has to happen, um, obviously, as well. You have to do that one, along with Breaker, along with Fatu, along with, you know, along with Gunther, excuse me. And then, of course, you got to put in, like I said, some of those other matchups people want to see for maybe one last time. Him and Orton at WrestleMania, him and Punk, you know. Um, who else could they, you know, bring in? Uh, that John, Him and Seth Rollins. You know, him and Roman Reigns one last time. Maybe even have the tribal, this version, this incarnation of Roman team up with him. You know, you know, that's something to do. Or uh, him and Sami Zayn, him and Kevin Owens, you know, him and Chad Gable. You know, you know, these are matchups people would like to see for the first time, if not the last time, uh, potentially um, as well. You know, that could be part of all the big, these big plans that they got set for him from January to December of next year. But we'll have to see what they do. We'll have to see what, you know, what the plans really uh, involve. But in my opinion, they're definitely going to involve, you know, they're definitely going to involve him becoming 17-time world champion, him competing in war games for the first time, him maybe winning the Intercontinental title, him being inducted into the Hall of Fame, you know, maybe him competing in some fight in a fight pit match. We don't know. You know, and of course, it's going to culminate with some first time matches of uh, matchups as well, along with the future of the business, like Fatu, Breaker, Gunther, you name it. As well as the retirement match. Again, you know, I I will say that you know some names are being tossed around, but obviously the one name that people feel that needs he needs to you know um, face and you know officially pass the torch and say that's it. You know, I'm done. This is your time now. Is Cody? So we'll have to see. And of course, you got like and his thing. You got these new partnerships as well. You got these new partnerships that WWE is doing with Miracle and Pro Wrestling Noah and TNA. I mean, oh my God! Can, can you imagine an interaction between John Cena and Joe Henry? That would be something. Can you imagine a matchup between? You know, Ethan Page and John Cena when Ethan goes up to the main roster. I'm just carrying Cross and John Cena. I mean, these are things that could happen. For wrestling, no. You got AJ Styles going over there in a week or two to face Mahafuja. Oh, I think that's how you pronounce his name. Mahafuja. Imagine John Cena going over there and competing against Mahafuja or Mahafuja coming over here to compete against John Cena. Again, I'm just saying. You know, possibilities are there. And then you got the other partnerships they could be doing. Obviously, one partnership they could be doing is with AAA, you know, uh, depending on that situation, you know, with AAA and AEW and all that. But if AAA is, you know, uh, divorced from AEW partnership-wise, imagine him going to AAA. Just, again, possibilities are there. You know, possibilities are there. And you know what? Him Him announcing this, it could persuade certain talents that are free now to want to remain kind of resign and say, hey, I want that matchup with John Cena. I want to go one-on-one with Cena. You know, we could get Ricochet returning, but then again, we got a vignette last night on Collision of a new wrestler coming into AEW. Nobody knows who this is going to be, whether it's someone from CMLL or somebody just wearing a mask and it's not going to reveal who they are until they debut. And it could be Ricochet. We don't know. We don't know. I mean, hopefully maybe Fightful Select gives us more information if they can. If they can. But if it's not, because you would think by now, 
post forbidden door. We would get Ricochet, but we haven't, which kind of tells me he's contemplating his options, taking a break as well. But I could see him wanting to come back to WWE to be like, hey, if John's retiring, I want to have, I want to have a match with him. I want to have possibly my only match with him. You know, you know, kind of write that off the bucket list. You know, um, so I could see that too. I could see you know certain wrestlers that are you know gone from WWE but have yet to sign elsewhere to maybe be persuaded to come back to get that match with Cena. But we'll see. You know, a lot of things are possible. A lot of things are possible uh, with John's last year. But again, we'll have to see what the big plans are about. I mean, heck, they might even convince him to say, "Hey, you wanna." You want to do blood sport with GCW? That could happen. That could happen. I mean, look, we get the creeds going over there, along with I think Ivy Nile. So yeah, the, we could see. So yeah, we could see maybe John getting, you know, a shot at doing um, blood sport, and you know, kind of work with, uh, kind of do something there. But that's up to him. You know, that's up to him. Or, well, I wouldn't just say up to him, but it's also up to whatever the plans and, you know, he's involved in along with Nick Khan, you know, Triple H and R. Emanuel. So, and The Rock. So we'll have to see. We'll have to see. And, you know, we'll have to see what, what occurs. But, you know, that could happen too. That could happen too. But, you know, but yeah, this, but yeah, you know, like it's, you know, like you said last night, this is 2025 is it. It's going to be for about 30 to 40, you know, or 30 to 40 or so dates, maybe more from January to December. And a lot could happen. And a lot could happen. And some of the things I've talked about, other things people have talked about are all potential abilities, well, not abilities, but possibilities, I should say. But in closing, I think the most likely ones are he's going to have first time matchups, you know, first time and probably only time matchups with the likes of Breaker, Fatu, Gunther, you know, um, he's going to have matches with them and others that are basically going to be looked at as the future of the company. He's going to have one last rodeo, if you will, with the likes of Orton, most likely at Mania, you know, and Rollins and so on. You know, he's going to have some last matchups with them. He's going to become a 17-time world champion. You know that's in the cards. You know he's going to compete in his first War Games match. He's going to probably become Intercontinental Champion, you know. And, you know, like I said, he'll probably be inducted as well into the 2025 class of Hall of Fame class of, of WWE, you know, along with maybe The Rock, maybe Bray Wyatt, maybe Batista. And that's a heck of, of a class right there going into the Hall of Fame in Las Vegas. But, you know, again, those are just some of the more likely possibilities you know, if not more than realistic possibilities of happening for John next year in his final year. You know, and maybe even, like I said, giving him a run with the Intercontinental title. But we'll see. And like I said, again, all these other first-time matchups, last-time matchups that I've mentioned, I think are very likely, if not very real, possibilities on happening. And that's just my opinion. But what do you guys th think about John Cena's retirement? What do you think the plans are, you know, that they have set for him going into next year? You know, do you, you know, do you agree with some of my thoughts on, you know, what will happen, you know, uh, with John in 2025? Let me know. Comment down below. Uh, check out my Teespring store in the description. Link is in the description. Also check out uh, the links to the other places where you can find my content. But yeah, give me your thoughts. And until next time, guys, I am out.